Howdy folks, Tax Grabney here with Tax Grabney and Outdoors. Hope you guys are ready for your Tax Grabney and Outdoors Saturday morning cartoon awesomeness because we're going to be making a gun related video here. Yep, that's right. Talking about one of my elephant guns, a Whitworth Express Mauser in 375 H&H Magnum and fixing the sighting issue that it just comes with from the factory in a cheap and easy part. However, this is not a family-friendly video, so to speak, which this has never been a family-friendly effing fishing show. Which is really funny because for the past several years, YouTube has been attempting to clean it up and make the videos that we produce very family-friendly and appealing to all the advertising companies so that they can abuse the illegal child online data activity that they've been collecting over the years to violate COPPA. Now, the funniest part is you shouldn't necessarily be worried about violating COPPA so much as the fact that now the government has an algorithm that can scrub through all the videos on YouTube and look at everything that you're doing because YouTube has now made it their business, the government's business, to be interested in what you're doing. So anyhow, I don't know how well this video is going to age because as you might have guessed, I started filming it way back in January when I got my Skinner sight, but I only had like three bullets for my 375 to actually get it zeroed with. And I have since picked up Aria Ballistic Engineering as a ammunition sponsor for Tex Grebner Outdoors. Never let it be said that you can't fail your way up, seeing as I hardly ever come home with any game, but I managed to actually get myself a Safari Ammo sponsorship. With that being said, I would never spend your money on something that I wouldn't spend my money on. I trust Aria Ballistic Engineering in their gunsmithing as well as in their ammunition. With that all being said, I hope this video ages alright because when I started filming it, things hadn't gone crazy yet, but I left the copper rant in there at the beginning because I meant what I said. So we're going to be talking about the Skinner sight in this video and some of Aria Ballistic Engineering's actual ammo for the 375 H&H. Now, if you guys want to support the channel in a way beyond simply watching the videos, you can go to TexGrabNearOutdoors.com, check out the Make It Weird sticker, the Make It Weird shirt, the Life Ain't Like the Pornos, Hunting Ain't Like the TV Show shirt, and of course, my personal favorite, the Kill With Stick shirt. I really appreciate everybody that has bought the Tex Grab Near Outdoors merchandise. Now, while this is a firearm-themed video, don't forget, if you want to support the channel, or show your support for the channel rather, you can go to 3riversarchery.com, use the code of TexGrabNear in your checkout. It shows your support for TexGrabNear Outdoors, and it gives you a discount on your shipping for all your trad life supplies, those of you out there in the Outlaw Trad Life. The Inner Arms Mark X, or Whitworth Express Mark 10, if you want to be super fancy with it, is going to be a hell of a gun for the amount of money that you're going to spend on it because it's going to be a full controlled feed Mauser action. It's going to come with a true Monte Carlo stock with an ebony tip. And I've never had a feeding issue out of mine, which granted I haven't put like a thousand rounds through it, but you're definitely going to know within a couple of boxes whether or not a Mauser action is properly timed or not. Speaking of the action, this is a 375. You can also get a 458 Win Mag, and it's a 30 6 length action for the most part. And so that causes a problem for this rifle. It's not a deal breaker, but it's kind of problematic because we're basically shooting a rifle that weighs no more than your standard Woodstock 30 6 but we're shooting elephant cartridges out of it. So if you've ever shot like a four and a half pound Ithaca featherweight 37 deer slayer with rifled slugs out of a 12 gauge versus shooting, say, a heavy barrel single shot 12 gauge with deer slugs, 
this isn't going to be nearly as comfortable to shoot elephant cartridges out of as, say, a Magnum Mauser from CZ. But it's also going to be more affordable. And so I think that it's a really good investment. And overall, it's lightweight, which can be good because you don't have to get tired carrying it all day. But there's a trade-off because you need to be prepared to deal with the fact that it's going to recoil a lot and it's going to be sharp and savage. However, the main thing that I hate about this rifle, how it comes to you, is the sights. Now, there are two different styles of rear sight that come on the rifle, depending on which rifle you get. It will either have an express rear sight with folding leaves, or it will come with this Williams Buckhorn style rear sight. Now, nothing against Williams, but I'm not a fan of this rear sight style on a dangerous game rifle. And it would be probably all right if the front post was an actual dangerous game rifle bead, but it's just a small bead front post. Not great. And another thing that's kind of crappy about this rifle is the fact that scope bases locally are going to be basically impossible to find for it. So it's an $800 rifle. Are we really going to put a $1,200 optic on top of it? Probably not. Because if we could afford the $1,200 optic for a dangerous game rifle, why in the hell would we be buying a Whitworth Mauser Mark 10? Question mark. But one very affordable option that is also true to the dangerous game rifle and doesn't ruin the lines is the Skinner replacement rear sight that bolts onto the receiver. Andy has one of these rifles in his shop, so he knows how to calibrate it so that the front post for the standard rifle is going to adapt just fine with the rear sight that you're replacing here on the back of the receiver. And if you look up pictures of professional hunters' rifles, this style of rear sight is not uncommon on bolt-action Mausers in the African bush. This just happens to be made by Skinner. Now, to adjust the elevation, once you bolt it onto the receiver, you loosen this screw or bolt, and then you can turn your aperture up or down, depending. This bolt will stay fairly tight, loosen this bolt quite a bit, and then you can slide your sight side to side to adjust for your windage. So it is windage adjustable, it is elevation adjustable, it comes with both Allen wrenches that you would need. And once you get one of these things zeroed, they're a little bit fiddly to get them zeroed, but once you get a Skinner rear sight zeroed and locked down, I don't think it'll ever come off of zero. And so it does look like it belongs on the rifle. You can remove the aperture if you want a pure ghost ring rear sight. What's nice about this is you can get a really fast sight picture, but you can also get a super precise sight picture because of the front bead. For a sight that's going to be under $100 isn't going to ruin the practicality of dangerous game iron sights and actually look correct on the rifle itself. I feel that the Skinner Mark X sight is a good upgrade on a really affordable rifle comparatively speaking.
Because if we could afford to actually get a Trijicon AccuPoint to put on a rifle, we probably wouldn't be putting it on a Whitworth Mauser. Just saying. I pride myself on my ability to shoot a 375 H&H the way most people handle a 30 6 but with that being said, I do have a few flinches in these groups that you're going to see, as well as the fact that my safety glasses get fogged up from the humidity. Of course, if I didn't wear the safety glasses, I'd have never heard the end of it as far as gun safety goes, but the truth is, it's a 375 H&H Magnum that I'm shooting. This isn't like pellets bouncing back off of a backboard with air rifle. If that receiver lets go, my eyes might be protected, but there's nothing stopping that receiver and bolt from blowing my head clean off because we're dealing with an elephant rifle if I had too hot of a load for the actual action strength. But... Generally speaking, my first shot's always a good one, and then the recoil throws my sweat onto the safety glasses off of my face, and then my groups tend to open up from there. Of course, I'm quite fond of saying it's only your first shot that counts. This is some incredibly accurate ammo. You'll also notice that my shots are a little bit high in the first group, and in the subsequent groups that are a little bit low, and that's because I changed out for a taller front sight, because on this particular 375, I wanted to not have to worry about overshooting at close range and being off by two inches high, because you tend to bury that lollipop of the front sight in the animal and it's easy to shoot over top. So I hope that you guys are gonna enjoy these groups. And I have no doubt that I will come in for more than my fair share of criticism. Just remember, it is dangerous to release too much of my awesomeness all at once. Three hundred grain cast lead alloy. 375 H&H from Aria Ballistic Engineering. Well, I reckon that I'd be all right if I hadn't flinched. While I've never cared for the 4570 as a caliber, I would have to admit that the 20-inch Marlin 1895s are about perfect for maneuverability. So now that I've got the sights sorted out by putting on a Skinner, the only thing I'd change about this rifle would be to chop the barrel down and re-crown to 20 inches. <laughs> Now you can't blame the ammo on my human error inconsistency. Obviously, first shot normally good, second shot kind of crap, third shot great. That's me, that's not the ammo. Now you may be wondering about why I'm shooting standing with a monopod and that is to help absorb the recoil because I handle it well, but it is substantial.
I don't really do any actual ballistic testing, and that's because this is a 350 grain copper hollow point coming out at 2300 feet per second from a 375 H&H. I don't think I could ever afford enough ballistic gel to ever catch a slug, but you're going to want to stay tuned I hope you guys have enjoyed this week's episode of Text Grabbing Your Outdoors. As always, God bless all my sports center of America. Join the NRA to protect our rights. Please check out my friends over at 3 Thank you very much to those of you involved in law enforcement, you good cops out there, and those of you serving in the military ready to die for freedom anywhere. And thanks for watching Text Grabbing Your Outdoors.